From Hollywood, it's time now for Bob Bailey as... Johnny Dollar. Pat Gallagher at Universal. How'd you make out with Miss Reardon? I met her. She thinks I'm an insurance broker or something. I told her I knew her husband when he was alive. Industrial hazard lying. Part of the business, John. Did you find out anything that'll help you? I found out she's pretty upset about everything in the world. That's the only report you have for Universal Adjustment Bureau? Oh, she invited me for cocktails. I'm going to call her later this afternoon and keep the date. Maybe I'll get some information then. Cocktails, see? You made out okay. Oh, shut up. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Baltimore, Maryland. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Chesapeake fraud matter. Expense account item three, $23.60, long-distance telephone call to George Hanley in Denver, Colorado. George is an old friend of mine in the private detective business. I told him about the report that John Reardon was still alive and living in Denver under the name of Frank Bowers. I requested him to gather information that would help in determining whether Bowers was really John Reardon or not. I spent the remainder of the day reading over the facts of the case as supplied to me by Pat Kelleher of Universal Adjustment. Expense account item four, ten cents, another phone call. This one to John Reardon's widow. Hello? Mrs. Reardon? Yes. This is Johnny Dollar. Yes, Mr. Dollar. You're the man who used to know John? Uh, yes. I asked you over for a drink. I hope you're coming. What time? Seven would be fine. I was at her home at seven o'clock, knocking on the door. It was a nice home, and she seemed like a nice person. Even nicer than the night before. I asked you to call me Elizabeth, Mr. Dollar. I remember. Yes, you also asked me not to mention your husband's name. I wish you'd forget that. I was upset last night when we met. Forgive me. How's your drink? Not swell. I don't know why, but I feel I should explain myself a little more about saying what I did about John. I... I was very shocked at his death. I suppose I still am, even though it was five years ago. It always disturbs me when I'm reminded of it. Yet it's good to be reminded, I suppose... To know that he really is dead, that he won't come through that door anymore, that he won't telephone me from the office or make any plans with me. Does that make sense? I suppose so. Oh, we can drink another one. Sometimes things make more sense with a few drinks. (laughs) Sometimes they don't make any sense at all, Elizabeth. That's right, too, Johnny. You know, I like you. I like you. Tell me about your business. You said insurance? Yes. You're a broker? Well, uh, not exactly. A salesman? No. I'm an investigator. That must be terribly interesting work. I suppose you travel everywhere. She had a nice mouth. Soft, frank, wide-open eyes. A couple of times I was on the verge of telling her exactly what I was working on and why I was talking to her. But I didn't. Somehow I felt comfortable in the house. Over the drinks and music, we eventually got around to John Reardon. She told me of their four years' marriage that ended with his sudden death. gave me everything I could possibly want to have. Why do I tell you all this? I never talked to anybody about it. Oh, I don't know. Possibly because you just want to talk to somebody about it. You're easy to talk to, Johnny. I was 19 when I was married. I'd never known another man... It was wonderful at first. Wonderful all the time, I suppose. I I just wasn't grown up enough to realize it. Can I ask you a question? Surely. Did you really love him? Yes. I'm not convinced. Why? Oh, just a feeling. Well, I did. I'm not so sure he loved me. That's 
an awful thing to say. No, I don't think so. It's probably been on your mind a long time. You don't know me from a load of coal, but we've sat here and talked an hour. I think I know you. I think so, too. You still seem very despondent about his death. Yet you aren't sure he loved you. I loved him. Oh. <laughs> here I am explaining things again, I suppose, because they sound so foolish. Once, we both loved each other. Very much. But we kicked it away. We just didn't get along. He was out spending his money on other people, and I was taking up this pastime. Can you tell when I've had too much? No. Thank you. Thank you awfully. Oh, Hugh. Elizabeth. Johnny, this is Hugh Bryan. This is Mr. Dollar, Hugh. Hello, Mr. Dollar. How's your drink, Liz? Fine. Now tell me again, who is this? This is Mr. Dollar. What's your business, Mr. Dollar? I haven't seen you around before. Obviously, you just met Miss Reardon, or you'd never, never start drinking with her. I wouldn't? No. That's true, Liz, isn't it? He was a friend of John's, Hugh. Well, that's nice. I don't think I ever heard him mention your name. I was a friend of his, too. As a matter of fact, his attorney. Hugh, you don't have to do this and in front of And since John me. is no longer here, I've undertaken to look after some of the problems he left behind him as an old friend would. Elizabeth, say goodnight to Mr. Dollar. Now look here, Hugh. Say goodnight you are... to him. He's just leaving. Maybe it's better right now, Johnny. Good night. Do you want me to leave? She just said it would be better. I'll call you at your hotel. <laughs> Good night. Good night, mister. No, no, you still have something in your glass. Finish your drink. Okay. An old friend of John's. That's good. Very good. It is? She picked you up in a bar last night. I saw her. I was with her. You never knew John Reardon in your life. You have no business being here. And I don't like cheap opportunists invading her home. Evidently, you can talk to her any way you want to, and she'll take it. Why, I don't know. But don't talk to me that way. I don't have to take anything. You were just leaving, weren't you? Hugh Bryan was a large, bristling sort of man with a smooth manner. I didn't like him, and he didn't like me. Expense account item five, $18. Even cab fares, lunches, etc. in and about Chesapeake Bay, talking to the principals connected with the boat explosion death of John Reardon. One of these was Lieutenant Jack Halverson, United States Coast Guard. You want some coffee? If I have to go out in that wind to get it, no. Make it right here for just such occasions. Just a sec, I'll plug her in. There. Oh, brother, someday. It's nice in the summertime. Now, what can I do for you? Tell me about the boat going down. You made out the report for the Coast Guard. You mean the Sharpston's boat? Yeah. We have a reliable witness who thinks that one of the passengers, a man named John Reardon, didn't go down with it at all, that he's still alive. You said you had my report. Those are the facts. But you picked up three bodies. Why not the fourth? Why not Reardon's? Well, we searched the bay for a solid week looking for his body. We used every piece of equipment at our disposal. We did everything we could. But you didn't find him. First you come in here complaining about our weather, now you're mad about the way we were on the Coast Guard. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a very lousy-sounding apology. What do you want to find out? How that boat exploded? Why you couldn't find Reardon's body if you found the others? Now, look, if a bunch of rich jerks want to take a high-powered boat out and they don't know the first thing about high-test fuel or engine running, they're doing it at their own risk. That help? Yes, some. I wish you could have put it on the report. That's my ideas, buddy. The report just has the facts. Now, for the other, about finding Reardon. I don't know why. He blew up, went down, or drifted out to sea. If his body had been in the bay, we'd found it. Was there a chance he might have survived and been rescued? All we had left of the boat was pieces of wreckage. And if he was rescued, it was never reported, and I wouldn't know about that. Could that have happened? Sure. I could be an admiral tomorrow, too. <laughs> It was four o'clock in the afternoon when I got to Elizabeth Reardon's house. You. Hello, Mr. Bryan. Is Mrs. Reardon in? No. Then I'll wait. It's important that I see her. I thought I made it clear to you last night I didn't want her being molested. You did make it clear and cruel, Mr. Bryan. Now, I'm here... Any to... business for her comes to me first. I'm an insurance investigator. I know that. She told me. But she didn't tell you because she didn't know and I didn't want her to know... 
that I'm working on a case that involves her. What? I have a report that her husband might still be alive. Come in, Mr. Dollar. I'll have to admit that Hugh Bryan's concern was as genuine as his surprise. He led me into the house and we sat at the bar. Only this time, no one had a drink. He listened while I told him about the report of Paul Coombs, that John Reardon was living in Denver under the name of Frank Bowers. Do you think there's any truth to him? It doesn't matter what I think, Mr. Bryan. I have to investigate it. Yes, of course. And if he were alive, it'd be the best thing in the world. Would it? Of course. She's been lost without him all these years. She needs him, Mr. Dollar. She always needed him. This little bit of drinking has been going on too long. These tearful little episodes with one man or another. Oh, yes, I mistook you for one of those last night. I apologize for that sincerely. Actually, Mr. Dollar, she... She's been quite a task. Uh-huh. Well, maybe i better talk to her now. Uh, do you have to? There's certain information I'd like to get. I think she's the only one who can give it to me. You'll have to tell her about the report? Yes. And there's probably so much talk. But it'll give her a terrible kind of hope. All right, I'll get her. Oh, you'd better mix one for her. She'll need it. Wait a minute. Yeah? I need vital statistics on Reardon. Pictures, handwriting samples, everything. Could you help me gather them? I'll do anything I can. Well, then there's no need to bother her, is there? You're a gentleman, Mr. Dollar. I don't know why. I do. You don't want to hurt her any more than I do. An hour later, I was back in my hotel room. The next day, I had an appointment to meet you, Brian, and get all the material I had asked for. I was more depressed than ever about the case. About then, the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. Johnny? Yes. This is Elizabeth Reardon. Please. Please don't look for him. What? Just forget it. Did Hugh Bryan tell you what I was about? I overheard you two talking. Don't bother with it. John's dead and that's that. Promise me. Promise you won't do anything else. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I have to investigate it. Johnny, is is that final? I'm sorry. I don't have any choice. Elizabeth? Elizabeth! There'll be another exciting episode in our story of the Chesapeake fraud matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, a trip to Denver and a look at a man whose gun makes it pretty emphatic that he doesn't want to be looked at. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> 